Welcome to the Mini Samurai Plus One video podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. Come on over and join the group over there. It's a Knitting Samurai Plus One podcast group. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are some discussions going on over there about baby vests and new arrivals and all kinds of things. So um, we'd be happy to have you come over and chat it up. So... This is episode 9. Oh, I don't have a name for it. And I don't have any of my current knitting projects with me. I just looked down and said, what? What am I going to talk about? If I don't have them here. Oh. Watching this podcast is it like watching someone have a slow slide down into just complete lack of accountability. <laughs> or complete lack of brain power. I don't know. I hope you laugh. I hope you think it's funny because... I try to be organized. I write show notes and then I sit down to record and have nothing in front of me. <laughs> but, um, so let's jump into the knitting content. Uh, last week we, I, talked about um, my Sunday's Coming, my new yarn for the Elizabeth Zimmerman Seamless Baby Sweater Thrust the Yarn Arrived. So I could finish knitting it. Um, this is Fiber Nymph Dye Works Sunday's Coming in the Cozy Base, which is 100% Superwash Worsted. It is knit on US size 6 needles, and I used the Seamless Yoke Sweater pattern or recipe from Elizabeth Zimmerman. Um, I was shooting for a... Yep, don't have a measuring tape. <laughs> For a 24 inch chest, uh, not 24, 28 inch chest, which is approximately a four year old size according to some other patterns I had looked at. I'm going to say I got it. Just eyeballing it. Yeah, that's sort of random. Um, it looks short and wide to me, but I don't know. It hasn't been blocked, so the shoulders have this fun funky bump right there at one of the increases. But overall, I think it's pretty nice. I like the yoke design. I made it a Henley, so I need to get two buttons to go on for the collar. Yeah, this would almost fit me. Um, so it'll be a while before Roland is wearing this. He is the intended recipient. Of course, I put seed stitch on the neck and both sides of the placket at the bottom hem and on the sleeve. So looking at this, can you tell where the new yarn is? <laughs> The, um, <clears throat> once I started knitting with it, I did alternate an old skein and a new skein. I had a little bit left of the old skein. And um, they were really close, but they weren't exactly the same. So I can't really tell. Not that I even care, but I think it came out pretty good. Um, the sleeves both ended with purple. Not at all on purpose. It just came out that way, so that was kind of nice. Um... What else can I tell you about it? It needs to be blocked because right now it's got this like weird waviness right here. So I'm hoping once I block it, that'll come out. Yeah, it's a pretty happy, pretty happy sweater. You don't often see sweaters that are this bright and crazy. So <clears throat> I could just see him running around wearing this being like, ah! Because <laughs> that's the kind of day we've had where he's like, ah, all day long. So that is finished and off the needles. Um, also last week I threw out the idea of maybe doing a baby vest knit along because, um, sweaters are great, but I found that a lot of the baby sweaters I knit him, by the time you get an undershirt on, because you want a shirt underneath the, uh, yeah, underneath the wool, you don't want to put wool up against his skin, and then the little short arms bend and there's all this fabric in here from the shirt and then the sweater and he's trying so hard to get his hands in his mouth and then he just gets frustrated because it's preventing him, all that fabric is preventing him from getting them in his mouth that I decided a vest is a great solution, right? Keeps his torso warm, which is what needs to be warm and he could still like get these hands in his face as much as he wants. So um, I asked if anyone wanted to do some vest knitting with me, and a few of you said yes. Jeffner77, I think, was the first one to say yes. But there are a couple of you, so thank you ladies for encouraging me, and please keep me honest. I, I don't know if you noticed the uh, distinct 
ADD symptoms I've had lately in terms of my knitting. Like every week it's a new project. Every week it's something different and I've completely left something in my UFO bin. Like I am just like, ooh shiny, ooh shiny, ooh shiny. So I'm hoping the knit along atmosphere will help me stay on track and finish them. And plus vests are so tiny. It's like the easiest project in the world. Well, at least the baby vest and adult vest is a little more work. But, um, yeah, so there were three patterns that I would really like to knit for him to have in his wardrobe. So w right now he's wearing 9 month to 12 month sizes, and he is 14 weeks today. 14 weeks old, and he's wearing, for those of you that aren't speaking in weeks, that's just over 3 months. Okay, he's three months and a week old, and he's wearing nine month to twelve month. Twelve month is the right length for him, but the like the legs and the sleeves on things are a little big. But the torso body length is perfect. So, so I am knitting the twelve month size in everything that I knit for him. I'm not going to knit anything smaller than that. And as I said, there were three patterns I was interested in knitting for the knit along. But if you have a baby vest that you want to knit that isn't one of these three mention it, let's do it, you know, um, who was it, well, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, maybe it was Allison J, somebody suggested the Milo, hadn't thought of that, it's adorable, I'm totally gonna knit one of those too, so, um, the knit along is gonna go until I have knit these three, but I may knit some more in between, but as long as I am knitting a baby vest, and working and finishing these three vests that I had the goal of knitting, I think that would be perfect for me. That would make me so happy. It would be like my little prize that I comp completed these three best. So, um, and then those of you out there, viewers out there that are um, knitting along, we're just going to do a simple prize structure of, you know, post a finished picture. That'll be a prize entry. And I'll do two drawings, one for this skein of... Dreaming Color Smooshy with Cashmere. It's a sock yarn. It's called It's Sparkler, number 510. I got this, I think a month ago. I got three skeins of this kind of yarn, different colors, all three. This is my least favorite color. It didn't look like I expected it to look, but it's still very beautiful. So it's a fuchsia plum lavender colorway. So that'll be one of the prizes. And then the other prize will be a pattern of your choosing over on Ravelry that I will gift to you. So, baby best knit along in progress, end date to be determined by when I finish my three best. So, and hopefully it won't be that long. So, I cast out my first one of the best. Oh, and the three best I'm knitting, in case you were curious what they are, are the <clears throat> Owl Vest by Jordina Haroldson, the Pembroke Vest, which he already had one of those, and it's so cute. Uh, Sheila D37 knit one for Roland, and he's outgrown it, and I really like it, so I'm going to knit him one to wear now, so that's by, the Pembroke Vest is by Kristen Kapoor, and then the Oz Vest by Louisa Harding is uh, the one that I cast on. Um, the Oz Vest is pretty straightforward, it's the most simple of the three, it's pretty much stockinette and a little bit of garter stitch. And that's it. So I wanted to use a variegated yarn to have a little excitement in it. I don't know how well you can see that. This is uh, Janet Superwash DK. It was a baby yellow color. And three years ago now when I was into dyeing yarn, I over dyed this because <clears throat> the yellow had some red spots in it. I don't know how that happened, but it did and I didn't want to knit with that. So I over dyed it this teal green brown color. So that's what this is. This is the main color of the sweater. The other color I was using, because I want, uh, not sweater, vest. I wanted to use this yarn because I've had it for a while. It's about a 200 yard skein and I had no idea what to do with it. So it seemed like having a little boy, minimal vest, that's perfect, right? That'll use one skein. Not sure knitting the 12 month size that I would have enough yarn with this. So the, I thought I would use a contrast color for the armbands, the neck, the V, the um, stitching in there, and then the bottom edge. And for a contrast color, I pulled out this olive green. And skein to skein, they look like they go. It, there is some definitely olive green in the um, skein I over dyed. 
But once I cast them on and started knitting, I'm not really sure. I don't know how well you can see this, so I'm going to just come up close there. Not really sure how well they go together, but um, so far so good. I've got about, what is that, four inches done. I think it's six inches, and then I split off for the armholes. No. Scratch that. This is not a knit in the round pattern. It's a knit a front piece, knit a back piece, sew them together at the shoulders and at the sides, and I was like, what, why? So I converted it to knit in the round, of course. But it's still like six inches till the armholes. It's just the pattern isn't written that you split off for, you know, you put the front on a stitch mark on a stitch holder and knit the back and then go back. Anyways, blah! <laughs> So it's going along pretty well. <laughs> Sorry, I just got really flustered for some reason. Um, and you can see that it's going to be about that wide. I'm going to say that's what, 16, 18 inches. So it's definitely big for him now, which is good. That's what we want, right? I just pulled off some stitches. So um, yeah. So I'm knitting it in the round. I'm not sure how well that green goes. If I need to, if I finish, I'm going to finish the sweater or the vest. Um, and then before I do the edging on the V and the armholes, I'll decide. I'll see how much I have. And if I have enough, then I will do it with the same teal, this over dyed color. Rip off the bottom green and then change that to the teal color. If not, it's going to be the all green. And that's how I'm going to decide. So we'll see how much yarn I have when I get there and how it's going. But um, this is knit on US size 6 needles. Oh, and the other thing I did, the other change besides knitting in the round, the pattern calls for fives when you cast on. And I just borrowed our, or I used the logic of uh, Elizabeth Zimmerman and said, okay, 10% less and I'll use the same size needles. So I cast on 10% fewer stitches than it called for, and then once I was done with the bottom edging, I went, I increased every tenth stitch, and that will get you 10% more. I don't know why. It doesn't matter how many stitches you have on the needle. You can have 100, you can have 300, you can have 148. It doesn't matter. As long as you increase every tenth stitch, you'll have a 10% increase. Why have I never thought of this before? And conversely, if you need to decrease something 10%, like if I were knitting this the other direction and wanted the bottom to be 10%, wanted the edging to be 10%, I mean, yeah, 10% fewer stitches. Every, you knit eight and then you knit two together and that's effectively decreasing one stitch every 10 stitches. <sighs> knitting for like eight years, no more than that, nine years, like a crazy woman. And I'm just realizing this now. <laughs> but uh, maybe all of you out there know this. Maybe you don't. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I just am not math inclined enough to have come to this conclusion earlier. But I'm glad I just got there and it clicked in my head. So, that vest is going. I, so, I have another two inches to go before I split off and knit the front and the back. I suspect next week this will be a finished object with the speed at which I am knitting it, and then I will cast on another baby vest. Dun dun dun! So, if you want to knit a baby vest, join us. They're great. And according to experts out there, um, vests are also good for babies that are crawling and moving around, because it doesn't impede their movement for other actions besides fists in their mouth. So. Speaking of Roland and putting his fists in his mouth, this is what he did this week, and we were so proud of him. He's, uh, here, I'll show you. You're gonna get it? Yeah? What's that toy? You got it. <laughs> you did it! 
so hard to get his little to get that toy into his mouth and that's pretty much what he does <clears throat> when he's left like to entertain himself it's like what can I put in my mouth can I put a bib in my mouth can I put my arm in my mouth <laughs> should I put this toy in my mouth pacifier it was uh, we were quite impressed the other day he grabbed onto the edge of a pacifier ripped it out of his mouth and then put it back into his mouth I'm sure it was totally like shit luck with the muscles that he did that motion. It was not planned or coordinated, but it looked it. And Steve and I both saw it and we're like, what? That's amazing. So yeah, that's where Roland's at this week. But I have more knitting to show you. So you know how when I was a crazy pregnant lady, I thought I would bring socks with me into the delivery room. See, I haven't forgotten about all my unfinished objects. I just, you know, keep casting on new and finishing them versus finishing something I started in August. So this was my first of two, clearly, because you have knit two pairs of socks. Uh, the delivery socks that I was working on <clears throat> with my first afterthought heel. I've never done an afterthought heel before. This yarn is three use twisted and fiber. You'll look great in stripes in the Harry Potter colorway. And it's just a straight stockinette sock pattern, easy toe up. And um, I don't know if you recall, I recall, <laughs> this is about a half an inch too long in the foot for me, but I decided that I'd rather have my stripes on my two socks match, so I would do the second sock exactly the same versus um, putting the heel half an inch sooner, or making the foot half an inch shorter so that the heel would be in the right spot. So. Um, they're going to be a, a little bit big on me, and I'm thinking that all my socks anyways, the more you wash and wear them, the snugger they get. So eventually they'll fit perfect, right? So the first sock is done. The second sock has been riding around in the back of the car, and I've been knitting a little bit on it here and there, and I didn't bother bringing it in the house before, but I have enough progress that I feel like I should show you guys. So this is the second sock, and you see there are one, two, three, four yellow stripes. And then on the fifth yellow stripe, wait, that doesn't seem right. Let me count this. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, on the fifth yellow stripe is where the heel increase goes, or the waist yarn goes for the heel. Um, I have one row of pink in there that you can see, so later that will get snipped out, and then I'll insert a heel in there. But riding around in the car, sorry, is it wants to come in running around in the car, I wasn't really paying attention and I put the, the first time I put the, <laughs> the waist yarn in for my heel, I did it on the fourth row because that's what I, where I thought it went. Went on the fifth yellow row, not the fourth yellow row. So I had to rip back. Thankfully, I caught it fast enough. Like I pulled this one out and held them up next to each other and said, oh no, that's not right. I caught it after two rows so I didn't have to rip back too far and it's straight stock in the, in the round so it's really not a big deal. But um, yeah, I had a little faux pas there. But yeah, so I'm past the heel. I'll probably do an inch or so up the leg before I do the... Although I've done the heel. I don't need to do it again. <coughs> the first time around, I put the, the leg portion of the sock on holders and then immediately, like after an inch, jumped back and did the heel so that I could try it on before I knit too much of the leg and all that. I don't think I'm going to do that this time. I think I'll just keep going in the round and finish the leg and then go back and do the heel. And then the other change I'm going to make on this sock, the um, first one I did, I did just like a toe. I did double decreases or I did a decrease on, <sighs> I did a decrease on each side of the heel. And on the second one, I'm going to space them evenly around like you, the decreases on a half. Um, and so this was decreasing four stitches every other row. 
and so I'll just space them every evenly so that there are four decreases every other row on the second one, but there'll be more of a spiral versus two rows. Does that make sense? Two lines. You have knit enough socks. Yes, that makes sense to you. You follow it. So my heels will not be exactly the same. They'll be close to the same, but not exactly. So um, that is what is currently being worked on this week. I know last week I talked about the um, Giles Wavy Socks by Ann Campbell, and I haven't touched them this week, but they are still out. They are actually my purse knitting right now, so I fully intend to finish those. So, moving on. Uh, what came in the mail this week? <clears throat> it actually didn't come in the mail. Um, my grandmother goes to Florida every winter, and before she left, actually, because she left after Roland was born, she left in the end of September, but I think in March, while I was still pregnant, at least that's what she wrote on the card, she knit a baby blanket, or crocheted a baby blanket for him, just a little car seat one, so we didn't know what we were having, so she did it in yellow, and um, <clears throat> she left it at my parents' house with a card for them to give to me when the baby was born. I don't know if she thought they were going down early or not. I don't know what her thinking was. Anyways, um, so she made this for him, so just a cute little crochet blanket for Roland, nice bright yellow for the car seat, so that was this week's gift to Roland that came. Uh, pretty soon I'm going to run out of stuff to show you guys, but uh, yeah, my grandmother used to knit, but now she's 80 and she only crochets now. Yeah, yeah, she is a crazy dishcloth crochet lady, holy cow. You give her whatever you have got, five days later, here's a dozen dish calls. She's so fast, so. Yeah, so she made that for him, so we're happy to have that. And then, um, no new yarn this week. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, no new yarn. I can't even but. I can't even tell you I ordered something, I'm expecting something. No, I'm not. It's close to Christmas, and my mother-in-law usually does some sort of yearning goodness for Christmas, and um, depending on what I hint at for Steve and for my parents, I get yarn there too. So we'll see what happens there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy yarn right now. I need to focus on buying presents. And lastly, what is in the future? What does the future hold for you, Knitting Samurai? Well, let me tell you. I think it's going to have some more baby vests. Our, um, we've had two friends in the last two months, three months, two months, that have had babies. One had a baby boy and one had a baby girl. And so since I seem to be on to knitting vests, and I think they're great little gifts, um, I'm going to knit one of the baby vests that I was planning on for Roland. I'm going to knit it as a gift, and I'm probably going to use this Baroque Vintage in a nice teal colorway for the little boy. And then for the little girl, I think I'll do the Milo uh, vest that someone suggested. I think that's really cute, sort of feminine little vest in this. Um, and that's it for this week. I think I was telling you about Divine Zenith that I was thinking about using that yarn for a baby vest for a little girl. But this camera keeps shutting off and the monitor keeps coming on because he's in and out of sleep. So I'm going to cut the episode short right here and say have a great week. I'll talk to you next time. Take care. <laughs>